it's like a weird dichotomy of both feeling really successful and really gratified and then also wondering if you'll have health insurance two months from now. I'm an actor and a writer. I've been on such shows as Barry, The Patient, stuff like that. I think what we've all seen is the shift to streaming. And unfortunately, our contracts were not negotiated for streaming. They were negotiated for network television. So in some instances, we don't have protections on streaming in the way that we have protections on network television. And so what you have are situations that now occur where we're not being compensated fairly. And so a residual is something when the show re-airs somewhere or it gets sold to another outlet, we get a check. Sometimes those checks are pretty good. Maybe you get $1,000 one day in the mail that you weren't expecting. Um, sometimes those checks are literally one cent. The biggest thing I was in, I was on a show on Netflix called Bonding. My show was originally like an independent series and then Netflix bought it and put it on their platform, uh, which was amazing. And it, more people saw it than I ever anticipated, like millions and millions of people. The way the contracts were set up because the budget was so low was that there, were, there was no residuals involved in it. It sounds like you made nothing, like nothing in residuals. Like you didn't make a dime in re residuals? I didn't make a single dollar in residuals for that show. As residuals are going down and as these shows are being pulled off platforms or not aired, actors aren't receiving any residuals from them, which leads them to not be able to often make their health insurance. So health insurance is obviously a difficult thing when you're in a business where your, your income is completely unpredictable. I was a series regular on NCIS Los Angeles. I played Nell Jones for 11 network television seasons. So um, yeah, I've done a lot of TV. And in December of 2022, I received a letter from SAG letting me know that I no longer qualified for health insurance. What was the work for? <laughs> you know, my labor lines the pockets of these executives and to what benefit in return, right? Okay, they're still profiting off of my performance and I can't even go to a GP if I have a sore throat. That's not okay. I think the perception is that performers um, who work at a professional level are all successful. Um, I think that has to do with how our industry is glamorized and romanticized in the media. And I've been lucky to work a lot across different mediums, um, but I have a full-time job as a flight attendant because that's less stressful than worrying year after year about making my minimum health insurance qualification minimums for union health insurance. E, I have another full-time job. I'm a writer. So I couldn't be an actor. I couldn't continue to be an actor and pay for my life in LA and have health insurance if I wasn't also in the WGA. Um, I sometimes say that writing supports my acting hobby. I was very fortunate to land the job that I got right out of school. It's not the norm. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of my privilege and I'm very grateful um, for the opportunity that I've had, but it's not the norm. You know, I have a friend who is an incredible actor, was cast on a Marvel Disney Plus show as a prominent actor's mom and she made $500 from her time on that show. That is just not sustainable. You cannot sustain life on $500. All we're asking for is for the ability, not even to, to get rich, uh, it's for the ability to be able to do our jobs. We should be able to afford to live a life in the city where the work is taking place. Let's just take care of this now. Like, hey, you know what? If we make a show that costs $10 million, on network, we're gonna pay you the same money as if we make a show that costs $10 million on a streamer. If I'm a waiter and I work at a really nice restaurant and I'm a waiter and I work at a not as nice restaurant, I'm the minimum is still the same. 
is still the same. We can't be going into every job literally not knowing how much money we're gonna make. We have to take away the ability from the AMPTP and from the studios of backing us into a corner and making us accept deals that are A, not fair, but B, against the spirit of what's already been negotiated. This negotiation is consequential. If we do not get what we're asking for, there is just going to be continued erosion, right? It's the, the erosion of compensation, residuals, the existential threat of AI, which is so real, right? We're right there. And what I want for all actors is um, a sense that a sense that our union is fighting for us in a way that it will keep us here and that will continue to protect us in a, in a really long-term thinking type of way. We have to get comfortable advocating for ourselves. Our benefits, our access to pensions, our minimums, everything is degrading. It's not keeping up with inflation. And if we don't take a stand, there's no way the life of a working, stable performer is going to be a viable lifestyle anymore. We're going to lose it if we don't fight for it.